morning, church. Y'all can hear me, right? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. God be the glory. All right. For the things that he has done. Yes. If you don't mind standing to your feet, and if you don't mind giving God a hand clap of praise, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. Yes, sir. Not, not, not come together on the phone, but come into the house of the Lord. Yes, sir. Lord. Yes, sir. Praise Jesus. First Peter 3 and 5, it tells us that Jesus was born so we could be born again. It is only through the resurrection of Jesus Christ that we are able to live and to inherit the kingdom of Jesus. This is a time, y'all, for celebration and one that we shouldn't take lightly. God asks us, we shall praise him. Amen. We're going to have our, our congregational hymn led by Dr. Floyd, um, entitled, Lead Me to the Cross, shall we sing the unison. Amen. If you have a hymn that close to you, go to song number 81. If you don't, I'm going to call the words out for you. Lead me to Calvary. I'm sure Sister Ruby knows it. My sister here knows it. Uh, once you hear it again, you'll, re you'll, you'll remember. Amen. Amen. Lead me to Calvary. Amen. We're still looking.
bless the, our organists. Just bless us all, Lord. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You can take your seats. Amen. We're going to now have a musical selection from Dr. Floyd, and then immediately following that, Pastor will come to welcome. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining me this morning on that old, that old half. I certainly appreciate that. Amen. Ooh, I'm an old soul. Right on, King Jesus. Right on. You all remember this one, don't you?
first. We first give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus, who we know as the Christ, to Reverend Howard, to the officers, all of you, to everyone. We say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Palm Sunday to yes, each and everyone. Exactly. Let's give the Lord a hand and pray. <laughs> Glory. Palm Sunday means we can finally start turning the corner. Amen. 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 It looks like it's going to get a little warmer. Amen. So to God be the glory. At this time, why don't you show your warmth? by standing and greeting your brothers and sisters in Christian love.
service this week, amen, trying to uh, uh, instill, reinstitute some normalcy, all right? So Thursday, we'll have our Monday, Thursday service at 7 o'clock. We will be in fellowship with Ebenezer Baptist Church of Orange, where the Reverend William Rutherford III is the pastor. He will read the word. We will serve Holy Communion. On Friday, we will go over to Ebenezer Baptist Church, all right, in Orange, New Jersey, all right, at 153 William Street, and participate in the Good Friday service at 12 noon. So I'm asking you to come on out. Amen. Most of you are off. Amen. 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 And if you're not off, you usually take off. Amen. 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 Hello, somebody. Amen. 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 So we're going to have service at 12. We're going to do the seven last words with them. Amen. And I am happy, glad to say uh, Reverend Howard and Dr. Floyd will bring Amen. the word Amen. each. Amen. 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 And they got to be they got to be in limbo. Amen. Amen. I'm a pinch hitter. Amen. Amen. So if somebody don't show, it looks like I'm going to be doing the word. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, all right. Y'all just bring one with you. Amen. And then on Sunday, Sunday, we usually have our, our sunrise. I say early morning service because it's at 730. All right. So on the evening years, we were going over to Mount Sinai Baptist Church and I would bring the word if they were the hosts, and they would host breakfast as well. When the odd years, we would host and do breakfast, and their pastor would preach. Well, this is an even year, and uh, we're going to flip it. We're still going to host. No breakfast. You don't have to try to do anything. You can have some refreshments if you guys and ladies want to organize that. Uh, please do so. Um, but we're going to host it. Mount Sinai is talking to the pastor. Hasn't been back in their church. They've unfortunately had uh, six hundred thousand dollars worth of damage oh my uh, God. to their church. Right. So the pews, everything is a mess over there. The ceiling, uh, everything is a mess. So they're going to come here. All right. As many as he can get together because he hasn't seen them in person. All right. Uh, since we went out before the pandemic. But the preacher, I told him to come. I wanted to encourage his heart. And I told him to come and to him to do, just bring the word. And he hasn't preached uh, in front of live people in over two years. I told him to come on out and bring the word. And what we're going to do, uh, we're going to do a collection, that offering on that 7.30 in the morning, as well as a special offering uh, during our Easter service. And I want to present him a gift from us in their rebuilding effort. All right, so uh, listen, we can be on the end who need the gift. I am more than happy to give out of our resources just to assist them. Amen. So to God be the glory. Uh, you all remember when I was here, we had big damage. We had damage downstairs. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. And we had just enough that uh, to cause us, you know, some pain. Not enough to hurt us, amen. 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 So, so, but for the grace of God, right? All right. So, 
So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now Sunday, since we're doing early morning at 7.30, our prayer will be sunrise at 6 a.m. All right, so we'll be on the prayer line at 6 a.m. All right, somebody said, Jesus, you're still in bed. Amen, you're still in bed. You ain't cool. Amen. Been two years doing prayer. Amen. 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 Phone still right beside you. Yes, yes, still sir. going off. Uh, Amen. Uh, uh, Amen. Notifications. Notifications and all that. So, <laughs> so I'm notifying you prior to. All right. All right. Just, just all right. pick it up at 6 a.m. Amen. 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 I just know me and Reverend Howe probably be the only one talking. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We be the only one praying on that time. Amen. So make sure you put it on mute so we don't hear your snoring in the background. <laughs> so we're going to be 6 a.m. prayer, 7.30, early morning worship, and 10 a.m. our morning uh, resurrection service. And then I just want you to know for the Bible study people, Bible study, this Thursday, we're going to look at the prayer of Daniel. All right, so I want you to look at Daniel chapter 9, verses 4 and 16 is our focus. Amen? Amen. To God be the glory. I'm going to ask Reverend Howard to come on back. Daniel. Is it 4 and 16, not 4 through 16? The focus is 4 and 16. Okay. If you want to read the whole chapter, please it's do right. so. Amen. 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 So to God be the glory. We're going to look at Daniel's prayer. Amen. 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 It's here. Seven. Oh, 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 I forgot, I forgot. You're right. All right. So we probably don't do Bible study. That's then hold it for next Thursday. You're right. We'll be we'll be we'll be uh in service. Amen. 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 We'll be in service. Thank you for that that reminder. That is a time class. So you got two weeks and that's more than enough time for you all to to bring all your great questions to Reverend Howard. Amen. 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 So to God be glory, I'm going to bring Reverend Howard back up so he can continue to lead us in our worship service. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Sometimes when I come before you and I just hear nothing, I say, I know their hearts are happy and I know they're glad and blessed and all that. But just it just changes the atmosphere when you sing out and cry out to the Lord. Amen. Yes, sir. So when I when I when I get up here and I say give God a hand clap of praise, I truly mean give God a hand clap of praise. Because every time I think about the goodness of the Lord and all that He's done for me, all that He's done for you, thinking this morning about humanity and how God has kept us. Yes, the pastor Bible said a couple yes. of weeks ago we've had maybe three members that passed on to be with the Lord during this awesome this, this, this tragic time that we're going through. But I know churches that had up to 12 and 13 members, both in New York and New Jersey. God's been good to us, humanity. Amen. He's been good to us. Amen. Amen. It's offering time, y'all. You don't mind standing at your feet. It's time to give the Lord that portion of all that He's given us. Elder Ke Kelly will come and read our scripture. Coming from Matthews. No, no, that's the that's the uh, follow the instructions of the uh, ushers. Thank you. 
Sit you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. And this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, the king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the fowl of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitude who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. This completes the reading of God's word. So have Thank God for his already blessed word. Yes, sir. All is preaching time. Yes, I mean, we all come here for to yes, get a, sir. Yes, a word from the Lord to help us to just make it another day. Yes, so we're going to have a selection from Dr. Floyd, and then after that, our beloved and esteemed pastor will come and give us a word. Let's greet him with a rousing amen. 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 We just heard the scripture reading, The King is Coming. Again, we're right those old ones in the auto mind. Go right the ahead. king is coming. Yes, sir. Mr. Ruby, you got me on this one, don't you? Oh. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Sir. The market place is empty. No more traffic in the street. All the builders' tools are silent. 
No more time to harvest a weed. Busy housewives cease to labor in the courtroom. No debate. Work on earth is all suspended as the king.
Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's get a Lord a hand of praise. Amen. 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 God bless each and every one of you. I want to give a special hand of praise to Dr. Floyd. Talents, and I just thank Amen. God for the timely songs. Amen. 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 We have gotten so contemporary that we get away from our hymns and yes. our spirituals yes. and, and the songs that really are significant for the moments oh, yeah. that we're in. Right. So I thank God for uh, giving her appropriate and timely selections this morning. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 Elder Kelly has read the word in your hearing. Uh, I want to pick up just that ninth verse. That ninth verse. And then uh, in the wee hours, the Lord gave me a, another verse to add to that. So we're going to look at Matthew 21 and verse 9. Then I'm going to ask you to flip over to Matthew 27 and 22. All right. Matthew 21 and 9 reads thusly. It's the last verse and the reading of Elder Kelly. It says, And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Go over with me to verse 20, or I should say Matthew 27, verse 22. You'll find these words. Pilate says unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all said unto him, Let him be crucified. Amen and amen. Thank God again for us already. Blessed word. Uh, tap on just a little more volume in this one. Amen. I want to uh, preach from the thought this morning. Whose side are you on? Whose side are you on? Today's gospel reading describes Jesus' triumphant procession into Jerusalem. This was such a significant event that, that, that everyone poured out. Such a significant event that is described in all four Gospels. And we remember it every Palm Sunday. I'm here to tell somebody that Jesus Christ wants to share his eternal victory with you. Amen. An event that occurred on his last Sunday in Jerusalem illustrates this. And you ought to see in your mind's eye uh, what I can see. And I'm sure some of you can see it and will see it. Throngs of Jews just lined the main street of Jerusalem leading to the temple gates. The city had swelled almost overnight from 100,000 to about 2.5 million people. Every devoted Jew was returning to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. It was a time of rejoicing. They were coming together to commemorate that great day when the Lord smote the firstborn of Egypt and led his people out of bondage and into the wilderness on their journey to the promised land. Jerusalem was God's promise fulfilled. It was their shining city on a hill, if you will. It was the center axis of their faith. It was the home of the Ark of the Covenant, a stone testimonial of all that God was and is and would become in their lives. This was a sacred journey. This was a holy journey, a consecrated journey, a hallowed journey to the place that united them in common 
faith. Then I ask myself, or or was it? Were all the Jews there for the same reasons? I ask myself that about church sometimes. Is everybody here for the same reason? Yes, sir. Have all come to worship and bow down to their creator? Apparently not. I'm certain there were some faithful Jews who tried their best to separate themselves from the crazy commotion. Well, y'all, y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, you come in, you want to separate yourself sometimes from those who might be commotional people. Well, 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 well. Yeah, you come in, you look, you say, ah, the commotion is on the left. I'll sit on the right. Yeah. It's in the front, I'll sit in the back. Yes, you get my point. Yes. And then there were those who came merely to pay their annual tithes, huh? To the gluttonous uh, uh, host of scribes and Pharisees. Amen. To put on a show of obedience, if you will. Amen. Y'all know it's, it's obedient time for us about this time, huh? Amen. Did they push back the date or did they bring it forward? Uh, we got a time of obedience every April. Amen. Y'all can say amen. 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 I know some of y'all, even if you was in grandbaby is social, you still got to pay something. Amen. 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 So, 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 some, 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 some saw an opportunity to sell their wares in the marketplace to the bulgy crowd. I'm just here to tell you that everybody that comes together for a religious reason don't have the same motive. Amen. Amen. Some even dared to set up their merchant tables inside the temple gates. And some were there merely for the show because they heard that this man named Jesus would be entering the city with his disciples. The man whom the Pharisees despised for his radical teachings. They heard he turned water into wine. They heard he healed a man born blind. They heard he healed a man with a withered hand. Yes. They heard he had walked on the sea in Galilee. Yes. They heard that just one week ago he raised Lazarus from the dead. Yes. They were mixed feelings among the throne of people. Yes. Mixed feelings about organized religion. Mixed feelings about giving 10% of their income yes. Yes. to the house of God. Yes. Y'all, y'all know, y'all know. Mixed feelings about 10%. Oh, yeah. oh y'all can say it. Amen. 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 Depends on what they Sunday fall on. You and I got mixed feelings. Well. <laughs> Too close to car payment. I got a mixed feeling. <laughs> Too close to the birthday. I got a mixed feeling. Well. Amen. Amen. Too close to that dress that's on sale. My feelings are mixed. Well. Mixed feelings about Rome's knee on the neck of those Jews. All of them could justify their feelings, whatever they might be. Yes, sir. Feelings have their rightful place in the life of faith. Feelings are what move us, inspire us, motivate us, and encourage us. Feelings arouse that human element in us. They cause us to contemplate and reflect. All that saying, no, be careful with your feelings. Feelings can fool you and feelings can make a fool out of you. For a little while, I want to pause just for a little reflection and discover or a discovery, I should say, about feelings. You see, the Bible does not separate our feelings from our intellect. We tend to interpret the Bible reference references to the mind as thinking and the heart as feeling. But the scriptures do not enforce this dichotomy or opposition. According to Vine's complete expository dictionary, any reference to the heart in the New Testament is defined as that which stands for a person's entire mental and moral activity, both the rational and the emotional elements. In the same dictionary, the mind is described as the seat of reflective consciousness, 
well, perception, understanding, feelings of judgment, and determining. In other words, thinking is not better than feeling, and feeling really is not better than thinking. The two are intertwined, if you will. The rational and the emotional work together to uncover the truth. Ah, uh, you said a lot, Pastor, without saying anything. We humans have a comprehensive set of conjoining skills for interpreting the world and discovering truth. Don't believe me. Believe Jesus, and I'm going to put it simply. He commanded us to use our God-given ability when he says, Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind. So the crowd in Jerusalem used their heart, their soul, their strength, and their mind to come to the conclusion that the man riding into the city on a borrowed mule was the Son of God. See, it was rational deduction. Jesus had healed the sick and raised the dead. He must be the Son of God. It was a logical conclusion. Jesus had walked on the water and fed more than 5,000 with five loaves and two fish. It was an emotional assumption. The Jews had been waiting for their Messiah for hundreds of years. Yes, sir. This wasn't chicanery or deception. This was Jesus coming into the holy city, his father's earthly tabernacle. All eyes were on him. Every man and woman could see him as he was. Thus, a generation of Jews were exercising their spiritual common sense, mind, body, and spirit working in perfect harmony when they shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the highest. Logic was telling them to crown him. Common sense was telling them to crown him. Passion was even telling them to crown him king. Crown him king of the Jews, the son of the most high. Oh, that was on that day. Now I want us to fast forward a little less than a week. And it'll take me to our second scripture. There is another sign. Through his arrest in the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus, the king of the Jews, is dragged before Caiaphas. The high priest of the Sanhedrin council who calls him a blasphemer. Mm -hmm. Called him a blasphemer. We would what? What would we call him? Mm. I never. You know. Mm. They called him a blasphemer. Then he is dragged to Pontius Pilate who fears a Jewish uprising. Pilate passed this king off to Herod who fears Jesus and wants no part of this condemnation. Upon his pallet, Jesus goes to hear the final verdict. But Pilate washes his hands of the matter and leaves the fate of the Son of God to the Jerusalem crowd. Our distance from the events calls us to merge the two crowds into one. We like to say, you know, the same crowd that said Hosanna is the same crowd who said crucify. I'm here to tell you, I beg the difference. Assume it was the same people who shouted Hosanna. That also cried crucify him. I said that's the assumption. But I'm here to tell you it was two different crowds. It was the jubilant Galileans who shouted Hosanna. And the aristocrat superficial religious ingrates of Jerusalem who wanted to appease the Romans who cried crucified. Yes, Sometimes you've got to look at the text with two words. Yes, preaching to my call upon preachers now. Yes, you've got to look at the world behind the text. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then you've got to see the world in front of the text. Say so. Say so. This is not the same crowd that shouted Hosanna to the most high God. This is the other crowd. The crowd that never took the time to get to know Jesus. They only knew Barabbas the troublemaker. They knew Barabbas the revolutionary. They knew Barabbas the thug and common criminal. They knew Barabbas the leader of their revolt against Rome. They knew Barabbas. They never knew Jesus. Five days later, this is that other side, that other crowd that, know, that had no desire to crown him with Jesus. 
or to crown him king. This wasn't the crowd that wanted to go to heaven. This wasn't the crowd that wanted to impress the high priest. This wasn't the crowd that felt the need for repentance. This wasn't that I was glad when they said it to me. Let us go to the house of the Lord on Sunday morning. Crowd. Wasn't that crowd. This was that other crowd. The other side. The side some people today still hang with. And I refer to that side as the side of fools. That's the side that Pilate, the punk, represents. I hope I don't offend nobody. In this case, Pilate was a punk. Yes, sir. We're going to break this down. Pilate represents the power, glory, and material wealth of Rome. The other side, um, he, he represents that other side. I said the power, you got to get it, the glory and material wealth of Rome. He represents that other side. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. You know that other side that tries to redistrict the black community yeah. at voting time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, because they're afraid that, you know, common people got too much sense to put the right person in place. Uh, yes, yes, yes. He, he, he represented that other side. Uh, that other side, that other side, they don't look at our seniors and believe that they all need health care. Yes, he, he represents that other side. That other side, that other side, they don't believe Ketanji Brown Jackson should have got approved. He, he, they represent the other side. Side that don't believe a sister should be at the table deciding what's right and what's wrong. How it could have saved the king of kings and the lord of lords. The kind of person who throws the rock and hides the hand. That's what power represents. You know what I'm speaking of. That kind of person that will take your stuff and then try to help you look for it. He represents the other side. Power that out when he could have stood up. He could have listened to his wife man, and, 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 and admonishment. Yes, sir. Who said, don't you have nothing to do, honey? Don't you have nothing to do with that just man? That's what his wife said is in the book. I'm here to tell some of the brothers sometimes you you got to listen to a wise woman. Yeah. She told him, she told him, she told him, don't you put your, don't, I don't know you, don't you mess with that just man. That God made Pilate's punkness, his cowardice, a prophetic part of his divine plan. Uh -huh. If you go somewhere about Isaiah 53, you'll find that he said, He's, he, he is despised and rejected of me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A man of sorrows and acquainted yes, with grief. Yes, sir. And we yes, hid, sir. as it were, our faces from him. Yes, sir. He was despised and we esteemed him. Yes, not. sir. This crowd didn't cry Hosanna. Okay. This crowd didn't cry crown him. No, no. This crowd cried five days later. This different crowd cried crucified. How was the other side? Hey, the question this morning is, which side are you on? Good question. Which crowd are you in? Well, are you in the Hosanna yes, crowd or the crucified crowd? Oh, if you've repented of your sins and acceptance of this King of Kings as your Lord of Lords, you're on the right side, I like to say. Well, you're on the Hosanna side, the, the crown him side. American theologian Adam Erickson wrote when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. He was revealing that the reign of God is in stark contrast to the reign of Rome. And every other political system that seeks triumphant victory by, influence pe by influencing people through violence and coercion. For the last seven weeks, we witnessed a war in Ukraine. For the last seven weeks, we've witnessed a political system 
Similar to that of Rome that seeks triumphant victory by influencing people through violence. By influencing people through coercion. And when that just doesn't work, when the coercion doesn't work, they just go crazy and take everybody out. Various countries have to decide whose side are they on. That's what this text has brought me to. That's what this time of year has brought me to. Whose side are the world leaders on? Whose side are they on? Are they on the side of violence and coercion by this Pope? Whose name started with a P as well? Are they all? That Jesus represents. Jesus taught a radical message of love. Jesus taught a radical message of forgiveness. He taught a radical message of peace and of justice that was completely at odds with Rome and all other modern world powers that you see today. So I want to invite you this morning, and I won't be with you much longer. I want to invite you to reflect on how today's gospel reading relates to the here and the now. How to consider whose side are you on? If you're on Jesus' side, who rode in on a little mule on an ass caught everywhere, who rode in preaching peace, who rode in preaching justice, who rode in preaching another change. I'm here to tell you you're on the right side. But I'm also here to tell you, you can't keep being indecisive. You've got to stop straddling the fence. If you're straddling the fence and you're not in the crowd that has decided to totally, and I say totally, follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back, then you're on the other side. You're on the other side just by default. There's no middle ground on which to stand. There's no temporary sanctuary. There's no happy medium. Elijah, if he was here, he would ask you, how long have you been between two opinions? John the Elder, if he was here, he would say, I know your deeds, but I need your heart. Oh, I need your cold. I can't do you if you look lukewarm. He said, you either for him or you against him. He said, whose side are you on? There are still two sides converging, even on Palm Sunday. The choice of sides belong to you. You can cry with the other side that says, Hosanna, Hosanna to the highest. Or you can cry out with that other side that says, crucify. But the choice is yours. Oh, y'all sit down. I got to tell you a story. All right. Come on, Pastor. Go ahead. I'm already on. tired. I don't want you to be more tired. Whose side are you on? Are you on? Well, there's a hymn that says, Who is on the Lord's side? I'm not talking about that contemporary who's on the Lord's side. Oh, Lord. By Reverend Timothy Wright. I'm talking about an old hymn. Yes, sir. It says, Who's on the Lord's side? Yes, sir. And the hymn I'm referring to was written by Francis Havergal. Yes. A noted hymn writer. A bright but sickly person. She was reading by the age of four and began writing verses at the age of seven. You got to know this Dominican lady, this lamb lady, this sickly lady. Learn Latin, Greek, and Hebrew. She memorized the Psalms, the book of Isaiah, and most of the New Testament. Miss Francis had a thorough training in linguistic and music yes. and was a pianist and a singer. Yes, yes. She has been referred to as the sweetest voice of hymns and the consecration of a poem. The hymn is related to the story of Moses huh? when he returned and found the people sinning. Yeah. Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, who is on the Lord's side? Yeah. Then he said, let him come unto me. Yeah. 
In Matthew 12 and 30, Jesus said, he that is not with me is against me. And he that is not guided with me is scattered abroad. And so today, we too need to make a decision. Will we say, Savior, we are thine? As Sister Francis him said. Will we say that? Think about the question and the implication of your answer. As you consider the words of the hymn this week. Who is on the Lord's side? The Palm Sunday. This Palm Sunday. Like every Palm Sunday in my, in my opinion is side choosing Sunday. We who are on the Lord's side have come to say Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. We who love the Lord have come to crown him King of kings and Lord of lords. We who have come to say Hosanna. We are on the Lord's side. We who have come to say Hosanna know the value of his forgiveness. And we've come to figuratively cast our palms at his feet. The crucifying side is still crying for rats. Oh no, they're not saying that. The crucified side, they saying it in a contemporary version. They come and they still crying for number 45. <laughs> Been out the office almost three years. They still yes. crying for 45. Yes. <laughs> they still trying to support the man from Russia. Yes, my Lord. But we've come to figuratively cast our palms yes. at our Savior's yes, feet. Sir. Yes, sir. Some sinners are still standing by with indifference of what's going on in the black community. Indifference about what's going on in Ukraine. Indifference about what's going on in those who got less resources. Indifference about what's going on in the social and economic lives of those who just want a fair chance. But we've come to take the side of the one who fills us with unspeakable joy. Yes. We've come to take the side of the one who offers us unbelievable fellowship. We've come to take the side of the one who showers us with incomprehensible love. We've come to take the side of the one who bestows on us undeniable grace. We've come to take the side of the one who got Mercy and mercy and more mercy. I'm going to ask the question one last time. Whose side are you on? If you're on the Lord's side, why don't you raise your hand? I want to know who's on the Lord's side. Oh, go on and raise your hands in the air. Oh, back in the day, you would say raise them like you just don't care. Who's on? Who's on the Lord's side? Stand to your feet. Come on, let's see that contemporary verse.
great, powerful, timely message. Clarifying what this day and this upcoming week is all about. Thank you, Pastor, for sharing. Thank you so much. But there was a song that used to um, say, Choose thee this. Well, it's actually a Bible word. It says, Choose thee this day. Who you will choose, who you will serve, I should say. Will it be God or, or the treasures of this earth? Well, that message is still applicable for us today. We have to choose who we should serve. I know a lot of us or all of us have chosen God. We confess Christ. So we've chosen Christ. But are we living a life that's Christ? Or have we really chosen Christ? Whose side are you on? At this time, the only way you can be on the Lord's side is that you confess. You, you confess your sins and ask God to come into your life. They say it's easy as ABC. Ask him to come in your life. Believe that he died and rose on the third day and confess your sins. You can do that in the, the confines of your home. Or perhaps there's someone here who's never given their life to Christ and want to do so at this time. You can. Or perhaps you are what we call a backslider. You've moved away from Christ for whatever reason. The Bible reminds us that Christ is married to the backslider. So if you fit into that category, you moved away from Christ and you want to come back, you can come now. Perhaps you're just searching for a home church where you can grow, hear the word, and serve and be loved on. I say every week, if you're in the state of New Jersey, anywhere in this area, Emmanuel Baptist Church, this great shepherd, this great people. There's no better place to come. So maybe you're looking for a church home. You can even call if you're out there at home. Or if there's someone here that wants to join the church, the doors of the church are open. Is there one? Is there one? No turn. God bless you all. Let's give God a hand clap and praise. definitions for the word benevolence, but there's one word that you don't see, it's selfishness. You look at gifts, kind, heartfelt gifts. So we as a church, we want to be a blessing to others. So if we want to do such, we have to be doers of the word. So in the benevolence fund, we should give heartfelt gifts. Right now, we will be taking up a collection for our benevolence fund. And like I said, I appeal to your heart for a heartfelt gift because if we look at ourselves, not at each other, God has been good. 
Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Oh, yes. Thank you. So let's give a heartfelt gift. Follow the directions of the other. You can stand, come freely, come freely. Thank you. 